Hey, how are you? Good to see you today. What a beautiful day it is. Lord bless us with another beautiful day. I want to talk to you this afternoon about pleasing God, pleasing God. We all want to live a life that pleases God. <clears throat> just, um, it's a part of our born again nature, just like a, a child wants to please his or her mother or father. Uh, we as believers, born again believers, children of God, want to please God. The, the thing is, we can please man. We do please Him. Uh, we are made accepted in the blood. I mean, we are completely justified by His grace. It's not like we're working in a performance mode, uh, trying to get God to like us. Um, so, because of Christ's blood, we or God is pleased with us as his children. Don't ever forget that. The thing is, and this is what I want to deal with, lots of times things we do do not please the Lord. Here's one example of that. David, the uh, patriarch David in the Old Testament, a man that was after God's own heart, a man where comes the lineage of Christ, uh, wrote so many of the Psalms. Here is a true child of God but he did some things that didn't please the Lord and the reason I wanted to talk about it is there's consequences when we don't please the Lord um, we don't lose our salvation because here again God is pleased with us because of the blood of Christ or he would not have saved us God is not gonna save us and well you know I don't like how these guys are doing or I'm just not pleased with them um, that's not going to happen. He will chasten us because he loves us when we do things that don't please him. Well, here's what happened to David. When he became king, uh, God blessed him with a lot of victory, a lot of uh, um, situations where God delivered him. Uh, David had so much. Um, and yet, when he started forgetting where he came from, and he forgot what God had done for him and what God expected of him, then what he did didn't really matter as much whether it pleased God or not. I guess he just assumed that he was God's anointed, and that he was, but he did some things that didn't please God, and he suffered horrifically for it. And the example I wanna use is when David was not out at battle like he should have been, and he was sitting on the palace looking out, and he saw Bathsheba. And this beautiful woman was bathing and David was uh, drawn to her looks and lusted after her, sent for her. She came there, uh, they, they had an intimate relationship. She becomes pregnant and then David sends for her husband Uriah and uh, tries to get him killed and finally does. So in, a, in essence, uh, David not only committed adultery, he committed murder. Um, this is a child of God. Uh, this can happen to a child of God. Um, and I wanted to use some verses from chapter 11 of 2 Samuel, just three. It's kind of the cap of uh, what happened with David and Bathsheba. It says in verse 26, And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when she or when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But here's the part of the verse that really caught my attention. I wanted to share with you. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now what's going to about to happen? This son's going to die. This the son that was conceived in this uh, adulterous affair. Um, David will be forgiven. Nathan's going to bring the message in chapter 12, and David's going to really pronounce his own sentence. But then he's going to confess that he had sinned against the Lord. And, and then Nathan is going to say, and you are also forgiven. Nevertheless, Nathan said, the sword shall not depart from your house. So what happens from here on in the history of David uh, we understand and see for sure that his sons, uh, he lost his sons, he lost uh, his integrity before his sons. It was just a, a mess. It really was. That's what happens when we don't 
please the Lord in our actions. And I pray the Lord will help us want to please the Lord. I, I know that we do. I know you do. But the, the problem I think we have is we have this sinful nature. We don't always do what we want to do. It's like the Apostle Paul in Romans 7. The things I would do, I do. And things I don't want to do, I end up doing. And what happens, we don't, uh, we lose our fellowship with God. We, we don't uh, commit ourselves to pleasing the Lord. We don't put Him first in our actions, our motives, or what we want to do. I really wonder, frankly, if I've ever preached a sermon that pleased the Lord. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've had people say that was a good sermon. I've had feelings myself that felt pretty good about it, you know. But I really wonder if it ever pleased the Lord. I wonder if our worship services please the Lord. I think so much in the church today, we try to get the right kind of song service, the right kind of music. And I know that, that basically we want to uh, do it to glorify God, we say. But if we're really honest with ourselves, that unredeemed flesh that, that we're struggling against, really we want to be pleased. You know, I, I want to preach to glorify God, but, you know, I kind of like it when somebody says, you know, that's a pretty good message, or I feel pretty good about it. But I think we need to be really looking more deeply in our spiritual life. It, does this please the Lord? Is our worship service pleasing God? What does God think about it? And we know what He thinks about it, but what His Word says about it as we walk with Him humbly. And uh, we know that in the flesh, uh, we cannot please God. Uh, Romans teaches that. Uh, in the flesh shall no man please God. By the works or the deeds of the law shall no one please God. If we kept the law perfectly, that is not pleasing God. What's pleasing God is God's working in us to, uh, to bring about uh, His glory and really to, to manifest the gift of eternal life that He's given us. So what I want us to see is God uh, gives us faith. That is a fruit of the Spirit. And we know from Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. But with faith, we please the Lord. So we can please the Lord by our actions when we do it in faith. And the reason we do is not because of we're doing some great deed or some very uh, good spiritual endeavor or we go on a mission trip or we uh, give to the poor and all those things are very good and needful and we certainly need to be about doing them but what what God is pleased with is the faith that he's given us he's pleased with because that's the work within us uh, Philippians 2 12 and 13 uh, talks about that in the light of uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it's God that worketh in you both the willing to do of his good pleasure so what that means for a believer is what pleases God is for him to see the work that he's already given us namely faith as he works that out uh, so that is not perfection that is not uh, some great uh, feat that we that we get to Rather, it's a trusting confidence in God, believing Him, believing Jesus is the Son of God, and, and going on, and even though we fail a lot of times, uh, confessing our sins, you know, that pleases God. To ignore them and sweep them under the rug is not going to please God. But when we confess what's happened, we're then trusting in the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what pleases God is understanding that we are under the name of Christ. In other words, it's Christ's righteousness that pleases God. That's why God said when Jesus uh, was baptized, when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, even though there were two other uh, figures there, uh, namely Moses and Elijah, um, God says, this is my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And so, so we see that, and, and so God is pleased with Jesus, and we're in Christ, so that makes God pleased with us. Now, when we do not practice our position in Christ, 
is when God is not pleased. So, so we please God, first of all, by faith. Enoch uh, walked with God because he believed God. He had faith in God, and it pleased God the way his life was lived. And so he didn't really die a physical death on earth. He was translated, you remember. Uh, so we, we see the benefits and the blessings and, and gosh, the fellowship of pleasing God. Because, you know, I, I think sometimes we, and we all have that chance to do, we want to please other people too much. And uh, you can't please everybody. You can't. You, you can't really please yourself. The thing is, though, when we really want to please God and God knows our heart that we do want to please Him and we base our decisions and and tried to deal with our actions based on that we end up pleasing others and, and we please ourselves proverbs 28 there, there's a verse there that says that it says when a man's ways please the lord even his enemies are at peace with him so it should matter how we act is, is our actions pleasing god is our worship pleasing god is my preaching or any preacher's preaching pleasing god or is it to please people uh, because we're living in a time where, you know, people want their ears tickled with sermons. They don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to hear about truth. They don't want to hear about a sovereign God electing, predestinating uh, uh, God of, of wrath and God of mercy. Uh, but, but that's the way it is. And that's what pleases God. Truth always pleases God. Uh, the great example of pleasing God, of course, is our Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only one that ever did it. And what a blessing that we have to know him as our Savior and to know that he has given us all the benefits of his righteousness and he imputed that to us. I just wanted to make sure we understood that John 8, and I believe it's verse 29. And here's what Jesus says. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please Him. So when when we're pleasing others or pleasing ourselves, that's what David was doing. He was pleasing himself, and he wasn't pleasing God. And what happens when that happens is we lose fellowship with God. And Jesus says, he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. The greatest comfort we have as believers is that God will never leave us nor forsake us. But sometimes that fact is not felt. And the reason it's not is we're doing things that's not pleasing God. We're doing things as a nation that's not pleasing to God. How can we expect God to bless this nation? He simply can't do it. But the scripture says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. How does one know a nation's God is the Lord by the way that nation lives, by the way that nation promotes God. How does people know you are a Christian, that you love God, that you are born again, that you believe Him? By your actions of pleasing God. And so Jesus says, I do all things to please my Heavenly Father. And that's how we need to do it. We need to live like that because when that happens, we'll feel the fact of his presence always and, and that is a great blessing for our lives and what a great joy that should be to all of us you know when you think about pleasing God humility uh, pleases God in Micah 6 8 the Old Testament prophet the minor one of the prophets here in Micah said um, you know what is required of the old man uh, in Micah 6 8 he might say, well, what does it take to please God? And he says three things. To do justly, uh, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Now, that's something we can do every day by God's enabling grace. Now, I'm talking about pleasing God as a believer. A non-believer cannot please God. We can't please God in our flesh. That's why the Christian life is a spiritual endeavor. It is a, it is a journey to God. When we don't please God, the reason David wrote Psalm 51 is because of this episode with Bathsheba, when he felt the loneliness of God, and you remember he cried out there to God, after he acknowledged, I have sinned against thee, 
and thee only have I sinned. He later in that psalm says, um, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That was David's heart cry. So Jesus says, I do all things to please the Heavenly Father. And even that meant the cross. You remember in Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Father, if thy will could be, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Can we say that when we're facing situations that we don't want to do, and we're going to have to, and we have and will, but may God help us by his grace say, Lord, it's okay to tell God how you feel, but then to end that with this submission of understanding that you want to do all things to please him and to thank him for his many blessings of his grace in your life. It's a great blessing. I want to just close by, by making a few comments from the book of uh, from the book of Hebrews, and because Jesus again is the one that that we're basing, because it's in Him that we plead God. When we stand before God, it's not going to be whether we've lived a life that was notably uh, pleasing to God, and God will say, "Well, you you can go to heaven." We we none deserve that, but it's going to be where Jesus stands with us as our elder brother. And he says, I have forgiven that man or that woman. They are saved. They have their works or my works. And God is pleased with that always. In Hebrews chapter 9, we're talking about the sacrifices. Yeah, you remember, God is more pleased with obedience than he is sacrifice. Well, Jesus did that. And then he gave that to us. He obeyed God. He never sinned. And then he gives us that sinless heritage that only he could accomplish for us. And it says there in verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 9, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. That's the Old Testament. And then in verse 11, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. In other words, Christ with the good things to come. Now, we're embracing that right now in the New Testament age, in this church dispensation, the good things that come, his shed blood, that sacrifice that he has made for us. We don't have to bring bulls and goats and doves and pigeons to church because he has made that one sacrifice. He is our Passover. But then in Hebrews 10, listen to verse 8. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldst not neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law. And you remember how much God emphasized sacrifices in the Old Testament and the sacrificial system. It was the way to acknowledge our sinfulness. It was the way to God uh, by sacrifice. Well, Jesus became that one-time sacrifice for us, and that's what pleases God. That's when we pray, when we pray in Jesus' name. When we pray in a heart of trusting God and believing Him and submitting to His will in our life, God says our prayers are a sweet-smelling savor. That is, God's pleased with our prayers, even the aroma of our lives of prayer. And then in verse 9 of Hebrews 10, Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Now this is Jesus. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, that is Christ, after he had offered the sac one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Did you hear what he said? Let me read that again. But this man, Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. See, that's what's pleasing to God, the sacrifice that Jesus made. So that's why it's so important that we trust him, that we believe him, that we have the comfort of knowing that Christ died for us and so we can live for him and we can live a life committed to pleasing God, not to earn our, our God's love. No, we need to do it to show our pre appreciation for God saving us, don't you think? Just say, Lord, thank you so much. And see, 
God knows what we would be without his amazing grace working in our lives. That's why it pleases God to see us even when he allows us to be chastened by our sins, to be uh, falling into things and do disobediently. Um, God knows what we would be without him. And so even in David's time, though he was chastened and God was not pleased with his acts with Bathsheba and Uriah, God still used him and he redeemed him, he redeemed the times, his family. He blessed them with another son, Solomon, who became a king. And right on through the lineage of Christ, they went. And, and so you see, the fact that, that Jesus pleased God gives us ultimate comfort, ultimate comfort for eternal life because that's what our eternal life is based on. Jesus' sacrifice is substituting his self for us. And that, my friends, is pleasing to God. And that ought to be most pleasing to us. And we ought to do everything we can to say, God, what I do today, tomorrow, tonight, whatever, Lord, I wanna please you. And I do, I wanna preach to please the Lord. You wanna preach to please the Lord if you're a preacher and you want to love and teach and be with your family and uh, whatever you do with your friends to, to acknowledge that pleasing God. Confessing our sins, uh, living humbly, submitting to God is pleasing to God. Um, it's not our, you know, you know, the bigness of our lives or, or the greatest contribution. You remember the widow that cast in two mites. Jesus noticed her and was pleased with that and said that woman is casting more than all because she has given all. Here's a verse just to take home with us uh, from Hebrews again in chapter 13 and verse 21. This should be our challenge to please the Lord in everything they do. I know that you wanna, I wanna, and God has given us that desire. Had we not been saved by his grace, we would not even want to please God. Uh, and so many times we fail to please him, but don't ever give up. That's what Jesus came to do for die for sinners, okay? And he knows, again, that we want to please him and that we love him. And he says in verse 21 of Hebrews 13, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. That's what he says. In other words, be mature in whatever you do. He said, I want to do all this for God's glory. Lord, I want to do your will. Not my will, God. I want to do yours. Sometimes when we pray, I'm afraid we have it made up in our mind how we want it to be and we want God to kind of work it out the way we want it. May God help us though, if we're gonna please God, to just say, God, I want your will to be done. Whatever you want, I want, oh God. And then he says in that same verse, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. All right, that's faith. Faith pleases God. Faith is a gift of God. All people don't have faith. Only children of God have faith. Faith is something that we grow, that increases, but it's a gift of God. And so what pleases God is to see that at work. And the challenges we face, the heartbreak, the disappointments, the pain we face in our body and our emotions and situations in our life that don't work out, circumstances that we can't control that are very adverse. Did you know that God is using that to be pleased with the faith that it draws? our faith grows. How would we know that we had faith if it wasn't for the problems that we had to face? Um, through Jesus Christ, say working that which is well pleasing inside, through Jesus Christ, that's how it's pleasing to God. Not through our church, not through our denomination, but through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever, amen. So that is pleasing God. And I pray the Lord help us to understand how vulnerable we are to not please the Lord as far as our actions go. But the comfort is and the, and the promotion and the prompting that, and the strength we get is understanding you have been made accepted in the beloved as a child of God. God is pleased with you as a, as a person in Christ. And he is shaping us and molding us. We're a work in progress. And so God knows that we're not perfect until we're in heaven, okay? While we're on earth, he's shaping us and molding us as the great potter does the clay. But, but we ought to be pleased with that, that God is still working with us. He, he's not gonna quit on us. He's not gonna throw us away. 
And so that to give us the motivation to say, Lord, I want to please you. And so may it, may it sort of temper every decision, every action, every inaction, whatever we have to do, our attitudes. That's a big part of pleasing the Lord because God knows our thoughts. And uh, so I pray that we can all please God. And, and, and here's the unity of it all as believers. When you want to please the Lord and I want to please the Lord, we're going to get along pretty doggone good. That's what, that's what pleasing God will do. It unifies us. And so I pray the Lord will bless that. That applies to our life, our church, our marriages, our singleness, our vocations. And uh, think about it. We can please the Lord. We have pleased the Lord through Christ. Christ is pleasing for us and gave us that pleasing uh, sense of our lives to Christ as he redeemed us. But also then he's given us the ability as he equips us uh, to have faith and to be able to exercise that faith as he works out in a display of those things that he has given us. You know, I'm sure it had to be really pleasing to the father of the prodigal son in Luke's gospel where that, that young man went out and just destroyed his inheritance, you know, just lived any old way. And, but he came to himself by the grace of God and he realized, I wanna please my father. And he didn't say, well, I know I can never do it no, he humbly said, got to his father. You remember, he didn't want to require the inheritance to be restored. He said, I just want to be your servant. You know, we all always want to serve God as his servant. That father met that son in a, on a run, the scripture says, and put on a robe and a, and a ring and shoes on his feet and had a great feast. Because why? His return is what pleased. It wasn't his going away from him. That's how God is to us. He's always drawing us. His loving kindness is drawing us closer and closer to him all the time. And that pleases the Father because he loves us so much. And his love is so great. And so may the Lord help us to be, to be mindful that we can do things that don't please God and to be wary of things that God is not pleased with. Would you bow with me for a prayer? Lord, we thank you for the privilege of pleasing you. We ask you to forgive us for all that we've all done in our lives that have not been pleasing to you. Help us, O oh Lord, to redeem the time, to walk circumspectly, noticing things, O oh Lord, in our life that may not be pleasing to you. Thank you for the Jesus Christ, who, through whom we can please you, even our imperfections, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins. Bless us, O oh God, to always please you, to be your servants and to do all for your glory for your honor and for your pleasing in jesus name i pray amen